The word of God is the word of life. And it's the wonderful words of life we just sang now. Wonderful words of life. I pray that you and I will see the word of God as the wonderful words that we will seal in our hearts. Or we allow the Spirit of God to seal it in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today, hopefully we shall conclude the message on follow God unreservedly. The final stage, part three. And I believe the Lord himself will grant us the grace to continually follow him unreservedly. Not just this year, but all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Just as Abraham did, if you are claiming Abraham's blessings are mine, you must understand where this man was coming from. He was actually a man who followed God unreservedly, without any hesitation. When God even asked him to sacrifice after waiting for so long, 25 years, as the general belief is, but I believe it's more than 25 years anyway. Because if you want to calculate the time, he had married because he was married when God told him to leave the land of, the, of his nativity. He was already married to Sarah. So if you calculate the year they have been married there, they were not told the years. We started. We only started counting when he was uh, 75. That um, God, God told him that he's going to give him a son. So actually, he must have been married before he was what 75. But well, general view says 25 years. But that's not where we are going. But one thing is it that even when he had, had, had waited for so long a time over 25 years. God gave him a son, and the same God said he should sacrifice the son. He obeyed. He obeyed God. Because he knew that God is going to do what? If God takes this one, God gives it to him. I mean, God is the one that gave it to him. And so God is able to do what? To bring him back to life. That's one of the one of the rights I've said in, in the Bible. He knows that God is going to bring him life after God gave him the son. So God is willing. He's going to provide something. When the son asked him, Father, we have the fire, we have the wood, but where's the, where's the, where's the, 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 the lamb? And Abraham said, God will provide lamb for himself. And God actually did provide the lamb. So if you say, Abraham, blessings are mine, then you know that the sacrifice this man took, and the belief he had in God, following God unreservedly. Lord, we pray that as we conclude this topic today, your Holy Spirit divine will grant us understanding, and your name will be praised and be glorified in our lives. And Lord, we, like Abraham, we surely follow you unreservedly all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Speak expressly to us, Lord, and bless our souls and our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we have been saying different things. We have been saying, um, 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 follow God unreservedly. Um, we have been seeing how, how you can follow God unreservedly. Well, you must believe that He is. You must, you must adjust your life. And uh, many other things that we can't say uh, in the uh, past mes uh, message. And you must, you must uh, 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 know that uh, what the Lord is asking you to do does not require your strength. What God is asking you to do or what God says is going to do, is going to do it. In other words, it is God's own thing. God is going to do only what God can do. The experience to live into to a strange place, a place you don't know. You don't know anybody there. Just go. And he did. He knew that it's only God that can do such a thing. So he, he experienced God to do through him what only him God can do. And then today we want to see. We have seen now. We have seen now. Will I say. Um, the ways by which we need to, uh, to, to follow God unreservedly. But we want to go further. We want to be specific this time. We want to be specific. And this, uh, this, this, what we want to be specific about is that why do you want me to follow God? Why? Why should I follow God? Why not somebody else? Why not follow something else? Should it be God? Should it be the God that you are serving? Why should I follow the God you, you, this pastor, that you are serving? Why, should I, why can't I follow my own God? 
Why must I follow your own God? That's the answer we want to give today. The Lord wants to give us the answer. The reason why you must do what? Follow Him. There are many reasons, but I'm not going to say it briefly. Because as I told you, we're on a journey. This earth, this world is not our final destination. We are heading somewhere. All of us, we are heading somewhere. So it's not our final destination. So if you miss it from the beginning, you will miss it forever. If you miss it now and you cannot correct it now, and you refuse to correct it now, then you will miss it forever. And God does not want you to do what? To miss it forever. And so, one of the reasons why we need to follow God unreservedly is because the Bible says about Jesus, because Jesus is God in John chapter 14 verse 6, it says, Jesus is the way. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot, there's no way, there's no way you can get to heaven. There's no way you can walk that path, I mean, walk this world to an end, and you are walking it in a different direction. You must walk to God or walk with God through Jesus Christ. You must walk with God through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way. Jesus Christ did not say, I am going to show you the way. He said, I am the way. Jesus Christ did not say, I am going to give you a road map. I am going to give you a road map so that you see this is the direction you need to follow. You see when you get to this place you will see this and then just follow the path and you will get to where you are going. No! He was the way. God did not give Abraham a road map. There was no road map. God did not tell him, uh, okay Abraham, now uh, get a paper and he got a paper. Write that, draw this thing. When you get to Sinko, from Sinko you go to Soko, from Soko you go this and then you turn left, you turn right. No! He was to follow. Because God was his way. And to us today, God has revealed himself as the Son. And who is Jesus Christ. And since God has revealed himself as Jesus Christ to us in our generation. And Jesus Christ is the way. So we are to do what? To follow Jesus. We are to do what? Follow Jesus. Is the way. He did not say I'm going to give you a road map. He said I am the way. Follow me. He told the disciple, follow me. And they did what? They followed him. The passage we read last week in the book of Luke chapter 9. He called us, we said, what? Follow me. But they gave an excuse. No, no. You have to follow me unreservedly. Follow me. Just come with me. Let's go. I am the way. So, brethren, you are not following the wrong Savior. You are not following, following the wrong Lord. You are following the one who has the right of the way. Jesus Christ did not say, I will tell you the direction you go. God did not tell Abraham, I'm going to tell you the direction you go. Just go. Just go. I'm going to tell you the direction you go. Now listen to me. That was why Moses, when Moses, God led, used Moses to lead Israel out of, now listen to me very well, out of Egypt, and as they were going on the way, they put, did a lot of things that were against God. And one of the worst things they did after God has told them, you should not have any other image, I mean, you should not make any form of image and say this is your God, was when they actually made image and called that image their God. God was angry with them and God, all this why, it, it was from that, you know the Bible says, God was with them. Now listen, God was going with them. Now Moses did not know where he was going. Moses was doing what? Following God. God was with them by a pillar of cloud, by what? By day. And a pillar of fire, by what? By night. So God was with them on that way. He was directing them. The Bible says, wherever the pillar of cloud stops, that's where they will stop. If it's going to stop them for one week, if it's going to stop them for one month, if it's going to stop them for one year, they stop. But when he moves again, they do what? They move. God did not show them direction. God did not show them the way. God was what? The way. God was the way they need to do what? To follow. And they were doing what? They were following God. And it got to a time when God was angry with them. God told Moses, he said, look, he said, I'm no longer going with you. I will send my angel to go. So, no, 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 I'm going to give you direction this time. No, since you people disregarded me, since you people feel, look at how they are complaining. I can't give them food. I can't give them water. 
They are complaining. Upon all this I've done, I'm not going with you. Moses said, hey, God, if you not go, we are not going anywhere. We are not, uh-uh, God, you are merciful, but your angel, angel will just finish us all. No, God, you must go with us. Moses pleaded. And what did God say? He said, no worry, Moses. My presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. So Jesus Christ is saying, I am the way. He's not saying he's going to show you the direction towards heaven. He is going to lead you there. He's going to lead you where? There. To the kingdom of God. Jesus is going to lead you to the kingdom of God. Another reason why you need to follow God again. Another reason, one of the reasons why you need to follow God is because, now listen to me very carefully, is because if you follow God, you are following the right person. Now listen to me. You are following the right person and you will be in the center of God's will for your life. If you follow God unreservedly, it means you are following the right person who is going to lead you to the right place. And that right place is the center of his will. That means what God has in store for you. Now when Abraham followed God, Unreservedly, you understand what I'm trying to say? What God says is going to do for him, God did what God actually did them. Now, I told you uh, 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 in due course of this message, maybe in part one, that God has designed something special for you. God has designed something special for you. That's why we say this is a year of great amazement. But for you to experience that great amazement, you must be right in the center of God's will for your life. And the only way for you to be in the right in the center of God's will for you to do what? To follow him. He's leading the way. You need to do what? Follow him. Are you listening? You need to do what? To follow him. To follow him. He wants you to do what? To follow him. Especially when you decide to follow him step by step. You are not too much in a hurry. That's why I was telling some of you yesterday. You don't need to be what? Be in a hurry. You don't hurry God. You want God to do something for you? Sharp, sharp. God may not do it what? Sharp, sharp. God may take his time looking at you. Say what? I know I'm going to bless you. But it's you are not right for that blessing now. Are you listening to me? Yes, God is going to bless you. But there are certain blessings, if God gives you that blessing right now, that bless, you may mishandle that blessing and you may destroy your own life. And so God knows the best for you. You follow God one step at a time. So as you are following one step at a time, when it gets to that place, when God is ready to release what he has don't for because certainly as you are following him, you'll be right at the center of his will. As you are following him. And when it is, since you are right at the center of his will, when it is time for God to release that blessing upon you, what will he do? He will do what? He will release it upon you. Abraham did not trouble God and say, God, you did not give me, where is the, where is the song? You say you are going to bless me, I'm going to do this. Abraham did not trouble God about that. He didn't trouble God about that. All Abraham did was that Abraham just followed God. Even when he come, came to the time of his, uh, I mean, of, uh, of um, having Isaac, it was even the wife that suggested to him that, well, since we have not, since we have not, um, um, we have not, we are waiting for this God and we are not getting the, 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 the child that we are supposed to get, why not just forget about, about it, go into my, my maid, Aga, and then Abraham obeyed the wife and went to the wife went to Aga, the wife, and before you knew it, Aga gave birth to, to Ishmael. And when he gave birth to Ishmael, that's when God came to him. He said, Abraham, what I told you the other time, that I'm going to give you what? I'm going to give you a son. What did Abraham now say? Because the wife has pushed him. Abraham was, I would say Abraham was out of his mind. It's not, that is not the original Abraham we used to know. Abraham said, but God, mm, bless Ishmael. God said, no. You are going to have a son, and you're going to call his name Isaac. You're going to do what? Call his name what? Isaac. God was specific. So you know, sometimes, sometimes we are distracted. I would say that was distraction in terms of uh, Abraham. 
Abraham was distracted. Abraham was what? Distracted. Abraham was distracted. But when you follow God unreservedly, you don't give room for distraction. You don't give room for distraction. You don't do what? Give room for distraction. We know Abraham was distracted. But he still believed God anyway. When God says he's going to do what? He's going to give him that son. He still believed God. Even though he knew he had missed it because the wife pushed him. He missed it. But he still believed God is going to do the same. And God did what? God surprised them. When he was 100 years old, when all hope is lost, when there is no hope, there is nothing. Sarah was already 90. It's not possible for them to deliver again. God gave them a great amazement. They carried their son Isaac, as God said. That is what God can do. Do what? If you follow him. If you follow him, then you'll be right at the center of his will. If you follow your own way, you'll be out of God's will for you. Another reason why we need to follow God again unreservedly, God will, since you are in the center of his will, and listen to me, since you are right in the center of God's will, he's going to do what? He's going to reveal his will to you. I mean, you are not following me. How do you want me to reveal anything to you? Number one, you are not the center of my will. And you start to reveal. I'm going, I say, I say, um, um, Thomas, follow me. Uh, Rebecca, follow me. And then we are going. And then we've been walking, we've been walking, we've been walking, walking for one year, walking for two years, walk, walk, walk. We reach one place, we rested, and then and I made up my mind, okay, maybe on the tenth year. And I said, okay, I want to bless Rebecca and Thomas now. And I look behind me. Rebecca is nowhere to be found. And I looked and I saw Rebecca. Rebecca was in the place we were two years ago. And now this is 10 years. Two years ago you are there. You are not right in the center of my will. How will I reveal that will to you when you are eight years behind? Do you get what I'm trying to say? God was not ready to bless you. And God now turns, saying, yes, <laughs> and you are not there. And God looks. You are eight years behind. He's not going to reveal his will to you that way. The only way you can reveal his will is when you follow him, you'll be at the center of his will, and you know what? He will reveal his will to you. Let us look at the Bible, the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Now, Matthew chapter 6, what, what the Lord said. What the Lord said. How God is going to reveal how God is going to reveal his, uh, his will to you. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. I'll read, I'll read uh, verse 33 and 34. Matthew 6, verses 33 and 34. The Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for, your, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil they are wrong. Now if you read from verse 25, the Lord Jesus was trying to tell people who are worried, I want water, I want food, I want clothing, I want houses, I want this, I want that. He made it understand, listen to me. All these things, God knows you need them. All that God wants you to do is do what? Just follow me. Seek my kingdom. Look at the direction you are going. Looking unto Jesus, the author and preacher of faith. Focus on Jesus. Continue to follow him. And the Bible says, as you are seeking God's kingdom and seeking to do the right thing, that means righteousness, King, seeking to do the way of righteousness, what, what, what will happen? God is going to do what? He's going to now do what? He said, all these things shall be what? Automatically added unto you. He's going to add them unto you what? Automatically. You don't even need to ask for him again. I mean, ask of him again. Because he knows you need them. And he's going to do what? He's going to give it to you because you are following him all the way. God is not so wicked. Now listen to me. God is not so wicked that as you are following him, he will not abandon you on the way. As you are following him when there are dangers on the way, as they are, you are following him when you are finding difficulty in the way, the Lord will run away. He says, ah, he's, she's not passing through uh, difficulty. No, no. And God will, run. God, will, God will not run away. God is not as wicked. I mean, God is not, it's not wicked to abandon you as you are following him. Finally, one of the reasons why you need to follow God unreservedly is because you will be able to do anything in his name. The freedom 
to do anything in his name. The freedom to command. The freedom to bind and to loose. The freedom to beat your chest in front of the devil. Say, Satan, you cannot do me anything. The boldness to speak back to the devil and say, get behind me, Satan. This is of the devil. It's not of my father. Will be yours as you follow him reservedly. Because he's around you. Look at what the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 5. Talk about it quickly. John chapter 15, verse 5. Just like I was trying to say, look, except you follow me, except you go along with me, except my words sink into you, because if you take me out of your life, you are not going to do anything reasonable. So look at what he said in uh, John chapter 15. I'll read verse 5. He said there, he said, I am the vine, he are the branches, he that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do what? Nothing. So you're just like a branch attached to Jesus. So wherever the branch, I mean, I'm a, a branch attached to the vine. So wherever the vine is going, is the branch like a tree that is standing now. When the wind is blowing the, 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 the tree like that, the tree is going like this. Mm -hmm. Is the branch also going along with the, with the tree? It's going along with it. Why? Because it's attached to it. That's how it is. So when there are storms, you are attached to Jesus because you are following him. So when there are storms, Jesus is the one doing what? Can, are you, is the branch carrying the tree itself? The, the trunk of the tree? No. It's the trunk that is doing what? Carrying the branch. So the branch cannot do anything of its own. It is whatever the, 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 the trunk or the, the plant itself, the main body, supplies to the, uh, to the, to the branch. That if you cut off the branch, it cannot survive on its own. It will do what? It will dry and die. So you must be connected to God. You must be attached to Him as you follow Him unreservedly. Finally, I'm going to read Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Sorry. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 13. The Bible says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You can do nothing of your own. It is God that works in you to do the right thing if you follow him. For you to do the right thing, for you to be at the center of his will, for you to receive his blessings, for you to receive his great anointing upon your life. For you to, 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 to be a carrier of the power and the might and the riches and the blessings of God. You need to do what? Follow Him. You need to be attached to Him. You need not to go back. You need not to do your own thing. Do only God's things. And I pray that the Lord will grant you that grace. To follow Him unreservedly, not just this year as I said, but all the days of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we say thank you for your word. Thank you for bringing it to the final part of this message. We pray, Lord, that this word you will seal in our hearts. That indeed our lives will not remain the same. Pray for as many who are hearing you today who have not decided to follow Jesus. Lord, even as they are making a decision now that oh, I need to follow this God. As they are talking to you silently right now, Lord, please accept them. As they accept you as their Lord and Savior, please, Lord, write their name in the book of life. And grant them the grace to follow you unreservedly all the days of their life. We appreciate you, Lord, for all you have done for us. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Thank you because your grace will continually be sufficient unto us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.